started. Um, uh, so uh, first of all, a very uh, good afternoon and, to, and a good morning to, uh, to everybody on the call. Um, so um, 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 this, uh, this webinar is, is for one hour and, uh, and we'll get started now. So uh, the uh, uh, topic today is, um, is to talk about the essentials of cost management. Uh, so, um, so before we get started, I just wanted to do a, a quick set of uh, uh, simple, um, simple uh, um, things so that we can make this very effective for all of you. So first of all, uh, um, Amar and I want to thank all of you for, for joining us today. Uh, can, I, can I request that all of us hold the questions that you may have uh, towards the end? We'll actually devote a good 10 to 15 minutes for Q&A. Um, we actually will... Um, have a combination of slides as well as a product demonstration uh, that will that will expect it to take around 40 minutes and then towards the end of it we'll actually open it up you may feel free to type in the questions um, if those of you who are on, on the go to meeting and then we can moderate that and take over some of the questions at the end uh, so um, so that's the plan and with that um, I would like to get started uh, by way of a quick round of introductions I'm Raj Raman I'm the Chief Cloud Officer at Minjar, and joining me today is also Amar Khan. Uh, Amar Khan runs uh, all the engineering uh, and the R&D for the Botmetric uh, platform, which is a part of Minjar. Hello everyone, Amar Khan here. Um, Hello. So, um, I, I, I just want to, to, to talk about, um, um, first of all, uh, very quickly about um, Botmetric. Um, um, so Botmetric is, is actually is a part of Minjar. Minjar, we ourselves are a global cloud solutions company uh, focused on all things AWS. We help customers with migration services and a very specialized managed cloud DevOps, uh, cloud operations, as well as application operations. As a part of what we do, we also have a platform called Botmetric. Uh, Botmetric is an intelligent cloud platform that can help customers such as yours, help you in your day-to-day -day cost management, um, track infrastructure, give insights, as well as resolve and fix issues on things AWS. So, folks, can you hear me? Can I, can I please request everybody just to go on mute so that we can have everybody listen in and then, and then we can, if those of you have questions, we can, we can take it up towards the end of the webinar. Thank you. So uh, for uh, today's webinar, our summary is uh, essentially uh, that cost is a very uh, key part of the AWS ecosystem. In fact, it's one of the four pillars of AWS. Um, we, we talk quite a bit to customers and one of the key concerns that they keep raising to us on a frequent basis is how do we proactively track and manage cost? Um, how do we tame cost and leverage the, the goodness of AWS? Uh, is there a framework? Is there a principle? Uh, so hence this session is, is meant to be uh, on talking about the essentials of proactive cost management for, for, for the AWS cloud. Um, a quick look at uh, the agenda. Uh, um, uh, we will start by talking about a high-level overview and the context. Why is cost management this important? What are the challenges that customers face? We'll talk about the AWS philosophy, uh, the life cycle, what are the parameters, what are the components that go into making the cost uh, and the governance of it. We'll then talk about how you could have a framework for doing efficient cost allocation, cost management, and cost optimization. All three of them are quite different, but interrelated. And finally, Amar will actually walk us through in terms of how you can use a product like Botmetric. There are many good products out there. Botmetric is just one of them to go and essentially get visibility and proactively achieve your cost management goals. Uh, so a quick, a very quick uh, review on AWS for uh, for those uh, on the call who may not be as familiar with AWS itself. 
So AWS, by far the fastest going public cloud, essentially composed of a very strong and a rich set of feature sets. We call them as the foundational services, uh, which are outlaid on this slide. Uh, you then have what is called application services, um, um, uh, using which you can then leverage it for your own applications and for other services that you want to leverage AWS for. On top of the stack, you have tools uh, provided by AWS itself for deployment, for managing, for tracking, uh, all these services um, and the components offered by AWS. Right? This at a very high level is what uh, uh, um, is the uh, key foundational level of AWS. You then have third party vendors who then come in and offer services on top of this as well as offer products on top of this. Now leveraging all this is what does AWS offer and why is it being used? Essentially you can, you can use your IT on the cloud on on-demand basis. You use AWS, probably the biggest reason why customers use AWS is the flexibility that you get. You can, besides the cost, you can turn on, turn off your computing resources, can use it on a, uh, on, on a very specified basis, and then you get the agility too as a part of it. You can scale up, scale down. These are the, at a very high level, the key reasons why um, users and customers are, are using AWS and why it's become so popular. So with that context, and here is just a, uh, onto the next slide. Here is a graphical uh, pictorial. Uh, in fact, it's got inspired uh, from one of our customers, right? Where essentially, um, where essentially you have you have you have customers who have on their own uh, come on board of AWS. So in this case, we have the gentleman on the left who's quite excited about all things AWS, but the gentleman on the right has already played around AWS. And, and he's trying to get a sense of how to, how to, uh, how to have that balance between uh, leveraging AWS but yet being cost effective. Uh, the gentleman on the left seems to think that AWS is very straightforward to use and which is the case essentially, uh, uh, you know, if you're getting, just getting started. But then as you start to get scaled up, uh, right, AWS can be uh, very interesting to go and figure out how do you manage it. Right? You need to know the basic principles of how do you design uh, services for scale as well as for cost efficiency. So, so one of the biggest misconceptions that a lot of users and customers potentially have, and this is all through their AWS journey, be it in the first six months or within one year after that, right? Your, the way you, you look at AWS will keep on evolving. Uh, right? So essentially, and this is part of the inspiration why we felt that, you know, how can we go and uh, go and talk more about that it's possible to design, it's possible to have a set of framework where you can actually set yourself up for success and cost efficiency for all things AWS. So design, it's possible to actually design um, uh, cost management on AWS. Design, I think to a lot of users and to a lot of people, uh, often tends to be very, very superficial on the surface. Not quite the case. Uh, AWS has got a very strong foundation, but one needs to know how you can leverage those foundations uh, by first having an understanding of those foundations, having an understanding of the core services being offered, and then taking the time to go and design all the services, right, so that you can actually get the cost efficiency um, um, you know that that is that is needed on an ongoing basis, and this can be done proactively. You don't have to wait for your bill to hit a big amount, and and then and then you find the whole uh, that you know that there is a need to go and now take some action around it. So, given that in perspective, right? We we believe that it's possible to have a very strong design-oriented culture around AWS. The the goals of uh, can I. Can I, can I just request people to go on mute, please, uh, for the benefit of everybody on the call? Thank you. We appreciate that. We will open it up for, for questions later on. So typically, the, the challenge that all of us face on AWS, especially for those of us who have used it for, say, more than a year, is we call it as the as a triumvirate. How do you get the best, how do you, how do you get the benefit of performance at, at a lower cost? And over time, you, you basically want to have a good balance and invariably you would hope that you get the performance up at a cost that's more in your control. Um, AWS is not cheap. 
many people believe that AWS is the lowest cost vendor out there and they come in and they realize and they're in for a root shock. AWS has never said that they're the cheapest. However, it's possible to make this cost efficient, right? So that starts first with an understanding of what is the pricing model? What are the components of the pricing model? What are the key pillars therein in terms of what somebody may call as the AWS proactive cost management? And then how does one have a framework for tracking cost, managing cost, and optimizing cost? Okay, so uh, these, are, these are the key levers uh, that we believe that takes to have, have, have a design, robust design for cost management. So I want to take a, a quick minute to talk about, first of all, what is the philosophy uh, right, that drives consumption on, on AWS? Uh, it's, it's actually quite straightforward. Um, the more the number of users that come on AWS, it drives more usage. It's a public cloud. Right? In, in a lot of cases, it's a shared ecosystem. That in, drives, uh, that in turn drives greater economy of, of usage as well as scale. Uh, the more people come in, you have AWS hence forced to scale up and they, they have an incentive to release more features. And the more the number of users, um, AWS could leverage that capability to drive down cost, which is why, right, at AWS, if you see on a monthly basis or, or twice in a quarter, they're able to actually drastically reduce cost on an ongoing basis, right? So this is, this is a very important uh, theme to keep in mind, which then takes me to the right, which is what are some of the guiding principles for AWS? First is an on-demand model, which is pay as you go, you can pay it by the hour, you can pay it by the day, you can pay it by the month, you have the flexibility. Um, then complementing that is a model that says that the more you use of something, uh, right, you can, you can actually pay lesser for it. For a case in point is, is storage, it's actually tiered, right. Um, so and there are other services within AWS that, that, that lend itself really, really well to that model. So initially, if you see this graph over here, it shows that the cost is actually going up. But over time, once you have a good handle on your uh, infrastructure and good handle on using the services, you can actually achieve tremendous savings and cost efficiencies, provided again, you have the foundation in place. Third, um, just like a lot of other things in, in our day-to-day -day lives, it's possible to, to have what is called the advanced booking or, or a reservation model where you could we could reserve in advance capabilities in AWS and over a duration, duration not being in just a few weeks, several months and maybe even a year or two out, you can achieve significant, uh, again, uh, cost savings as well as efficiencies. So the components that, that go and make these principles and this philosophy happen, again, quite simply put, you have compute, which is all about the EC2 instances and the various flavors of the servers that come on Amazon where you essentially are paying it by the tap, you're paying it by the R. You then have storage, which is actually tiered, as I was talking about. Uh, and then within storage, you have several flavors of, uh, all right, you have the Glacier, uh, and then you have the S3 uh, block storage. Uh, and then you have data transfer, with, where, where essentially uh, you're not paying for the data coming in, but you're paying for the data out. Right. So, and then all the various AWS services leverage this fundamental pricing model to make AWS happen. Okay, so this is what this is why the bill that you're paying uh, on a monthly basis or whenever you get billed, right? When next time it happens, you go by that it comes down to this. So this is the this is the essential driving uh, foundation for all things AWS, cost-wise. So, given that context, is it possible to to have a, a methodology where you can actually design for cost efficiency? The answer is yes. In fact, I highly recommend that all of you, if you get a chance, read a, 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 an excellent white paper from AWS released in October of this year called, called the Well-Architected AWS Framework. And for those of you interested, we can follow up. It's a public white paper uh, and that goes into a lot of detail. Uh, so. If you if you look at if you look at what does it take to design for cost efficiency, there are essentially four themes. First, how well do you understand your own demand, either for your internal needs or for your client needs? Is it variable? Is it fixed? 
you have a long term view is it something that you just want to do on a like say on a quick basis depends on your business depends on your teams how well have you understood that you are going to get performance efficiencies so you need to have some understanding towards that and that understanding doesn't happen hap does not have to happen overnight we realize that in a number of cases we ourselves are learning some of these ourselves it can take several months but you need to get started once you have an understanding of some of that you have a better sense of how to allocate the aws resources especially on the compute side on the storage side and the uh, data part of it uh, do you need to use spot reserve spot instances do you need to use reserved instances when to use it when not to use it uh, aws has got what is called as managed aws services uh, you have lambda kinesis all examples of that there those are those are designed so that you don't have to spend too much time monitoring and having an oversight over that how well do you know how to use them then once that is once once you have an understanding of the demand part of it and the allocation part of it on a day to day basis how do you have oversight how do you, how can you track your cost um uh, it, there are there are tools within aws and from other third party vendors that can help you on some of this and you need to figure out how to organize your users how to make use of uh, of, of of consolidated billing accounts uh, how to make use of tags and, and products potentially such as bot metric that can help you as a part of that. And last but not the least, AWS is not a one-time engagement. It is, as, as with most things in life, including ourselves, as people, you need to keep working on it. You need to keep optimizing not just the um, your, your applications, right? but you need to optimize also your AWS architecture on an ongoing basis. So how do you go about doing that? Do you have an understanding of the baseline that you have? Are you figured out at what cost points are you in? Right. So if you think of it, these are four what we call as foundations that go into uh, that constitute what we believe is as uh, the foundations for designing for cost efficiency. Once you have the foundation built, right? Here is a framework from Minger that could potentially help you implement that design. Uh, so this this is a this is essentially meant to be a circle. I mean, there's no there's no uh, there's no one place that you start. But essentially, there are three aspects to this framework. Um, one of which is when you start is that you essentially purchase for your savings, right? You you would you would you would essentially figure out okay, I need I need instances, I need compute, I need storage, I need to use make use of the AWS databases. And then you would start then th that will then lead you to believe that okay how do i control it how do i verify it how do i know what's happening and then how can i on an ongoing basis match what i actually need with the resources and the workloads uh, right, that i'm getting by using aws so this is something that needs to happen literally on a day-to-day -day basis right so there's a purchase component a control component and then a matching of your resources and the workload component your workloads being obviously your application workloads for which you're using AWS in the first place. So let's take a bit about, you know, into each of these. So purchase for savings. Um, some, some suggestions from us, right, proactively. Uh, reserved instances for those of you who are aware, uh, right, allows you to, to purchase in advance. For those of you not aware, Many of them are actually shy of using reserved instances. It's actually a terrific cost saving, especially if you know what you're doing on AWS. Um, reserved instances is a great way for you to get mileage over AWS, uh, um, and, and, and you would eventually you actually come out uh, better, and, and you actually do end up getting cost savings. Spot instances. If you are very clear about your, your workloads, uh, spot instances is again are a terrific tool, but be very careful of using spot instances. Right? If you're not sure what you're using it for, you may end up actually spending a lot more money. AWS has what is called as managed services. These are managed features uh, which are designed end to end, like Lambda, you have RDS, and your other capabilities in AWS, which are called as managed features. Leverage them because they're actually designed uh, right, for cost efficiency built in mind. Uh, and you have to actually, and the way you save money there is less on the features, but you, you have to spend less less time operationally to manage some of the capabilities there, right? So think of it as a saving from an efficiency perspective and the number of people that you need to get involved as part of your teams. 
Last but not the least, consolidated billing. I am, and this is where, for example, both on the storage and the data, a case in point is that you have three accounts, and each of them, we have, let's say you want to spend, say, you know, five terabytes each, you have 15 terabytes, right? You have a choice to make. Should I group it as a part of 15 terabytes in one account, or should I do five, 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 and three accounts? The, you, you can ha have greater efficiency and cost savings if you do it in a tiered model, which is 15 terabytes, and then within that, right, your cost net, net, net will be uh, a bit lower compared to what you would spend on the three accounts each. These are just some examples of how you could orient yourself upfront during your purchase. And again, right, no, you don't have to worry if you're, if you're not realizing some of these, all this is a journey. And we just want to share some of our own journeys with you today. Um, a bit about, about managed services. These are some examples of the AWS managed services that I was uh, referring to. You have EMR, DynamoDB, uh, Amazon Workspaces, uh, RDS, right? Again, the point being that designed so that you in turn and your teams in turn have to spend less time overseeing the services because they're designed to be operating in a self-service mode, uh, right, for the most part. So once you have an understanding of, of, your, of, your, of your purchase actions, um, you can then begin to then think about how do you, how will I control and verify? So, um, and Amar will be actually talking a bit more about this using bot metric as to how you can set up reporting and how you can track reporting. Uh, how can you get insights about, uh, you know, uh, which of my servers are actually costing me money? Uh, can I terminate it, blow it up? Of course you can, and you should. Right? Just like, just like we, we as people have fitness goals, etc. You here also can achieve the same way, right? where, where they can uh, delete uh, uh, so, uh, services and resources that are costing you, bleeding your money, right? But you need to have a very vigilant watch, and now you have tooling and products that can help you as a part of that. So again, within reports, we have categorized reports in terms of spend reports. This will be very useful, especially for people in the finance groups if you're part of a larger company. Usage reports uh, uh, in terms of how much is the consumption. Billing reports is where we, we, some of us get a heart attack, right, from AWS, saying that how did I end up spending this much? It's very unfair, and then you ended up calling AWS support, saying that why is my bill so high? And then if you if you wish that you had designed it up front, had the visibility, you would not be as surprised. In fact, you would be predictable on that one. And finally, right, you can customize more to your reporting and alerting as a part of that. Right? So we just want to share some simple ways in which you could actually set yourself up again for proactively being on top of your uh, cost and your billing cycles. Identifying idle resources. It's, it's actually incredible how many, many customers don't realize that they're bleeding money on AWS because they have resources that they must have signed up for, but those resources are, uh, are idling. And idle resource is still a resource. It's idle for you, but it's still going to cost you money. Right? So again, uh, it's possible to have uh, insights and, and, and checks and balances Right. So this is a very simple way in which you can actually plan for uh, for getting more cost efficiency. Um, I want to talk a bit about matching resources and workloads. So here again, here again, uh, picking the kind of servers that you want, picking the kind of instances, whether it's pod instances, reserved instances, makes a big difference. Constantly tuning it, uh, uh, right? Uh, just because you you picked up a certain server type doesn't mean you need to be wedded to that server type. You need to revisit what kind of configuration you have. Uh, folks, can I please request, again, uh, for those of you, right, just to go on mute, we'll open it up for questions later on. Thank you. Um, and then and then running, running, running multiple instances across the various regions that are uh, present on AWS. Another another way in which you can match your resources and your capabilities is the leveraging the various storage capabilities on AWS. You have what is called as a block storage. You have Amazon S3, Amazon Glacier. Again, this is purely information only, right? So that just so that you're aware how how you could leverage the various classes of storage back to mapping the resources for your needs at different points of your usage. So 
with that, I will actually hand it over to Amar. Amar will be talking about um, our platform, uh, but the intent is not so much the platform itself. Again, it's all about the things that we just covered so far, which is how can you get a handle, visibility, and, uh, and insights uh, to be on top of your cost. So with that, I'll turn it over to Amar. Hey, uh, a big thank you to Raj for uh, such a wonderful roundup on uh, uh, how to manage cost on AWS. So uh, <clears throat> I'll be switching uh, between uh, uh, slides and uh, uh, product uh, uh, so that we can uh, uh, get a, a good view of uh, what all uh, features uh, uh, can be helpful to all of you. <clears throat> So the first thing uh, 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 let's get into is uh, 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 detecting unused and un underused resources. So uh, let's just get into here, right? So you, you can see we have a comprehensive cost audit which, which, which checks that, okay, do you have any resources which are not being used or for example, which are underused, uh, uh, for example, low CPU utilization, EC2 instances. So there are there are a number of a uh, bunch of uh, audits uh, items which 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 uh, uh, checks that okay do you have any RDS which is uh, idle lying around do you have any EBS volumes which are unused uh, do you have any uh, elastic IP for, for for if you have an elastic IP which is unattached that means you are it is costing almost ten dollars per month right and 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 it does not uh, uh, stop uh, uh, here. So uh, what it lets you is uh, it, it also uh, uh, lets you remove your unused resources without going to AWS console, right? So uh, and, and plus it also has a how to fix uh, 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 knowledge base. So for example, if you have newer team members coming in uh, 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 to your team, they can follow uh, the instructions and just fix the issues. But for most of the issues, uh, you can uh, 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 fix right from here. For example, you need not go to uh, uh, AWS console and do six, seven clicks in order to just uh, remove one elastic IP, right? You need to go to AWS console, so done, your, uh, that, that uh, unused resource is gone, right? So you just cleared that uh, uh, resource. Now, and, and then we have uh, 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 <clears throat> something called as cost optimizer, which helps you prioritize which of the uh, uh, resources you should start uh, uh, cleaning or removing or uh, 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 bringing it down or you means you can uh, uh, you, you would want to uh, vertically scale down your instances if it's not being used uh, 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 that much or, or to the extent which which it, it, it is uh, slated to be used so this gives you a, a complete detailed view of that where you are uh, where we have seen that uh, a lot of our customers save uh, 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 cost in, in, within their first day of uh, signing up to bot metric most of them have a lot of AMIs lying around, lot of snapshots lying around, old snapshots. We have, uh, uh, surprisingly, they, we have had customers who have even ELBs unattached. Because nowadays you have, you, you launch all of your instances which are EBS backed, right? And when you uh, uh, stop those instances or terminate those instances, many of them forgot to even terminate the attached ELBs. So, so that, that's uh, about cost optimizer. It helps you prioritize which all uh, uh, resources you need to uh, remove. And, and, then it, and then Botmetric also helps you in uh, automating start-stop of your instances. This is a very interesting thing which... which so, so with the, with the uh, uh, freedom of uh, uh, cloud, uh, uh, responsibility kicks in, right? So nowadays, uh, 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 launching of instances, machines are more or less in the hands of engineers and uh, uh, developers, right? So, uh, so, so, so they, they, they like to, and, and no, no, no engineers will shut down the instances when they leave for home in the evening, right? Or your, your, even your uh, uh, workload is still running on uh, 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 weekends as well. So not for all, but at least for dev, environments or dev instances this can be done and as you can see you, you straight away you save 70 percent uh, cost here right so so here as well we 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 have many automation jobs which can be used so you can select uh, tags and all and then uh, uh, let me just show that as well quickly <laughs> so 
so uh, apart from that uh, you can also uh, uh, schedule uh, 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 you can also schedule lot of uh, uh, jobs wherein you can uh, uh, have have uh, uh, snapshots created and all and and the best thing is that there you can specify number of snapshots to be retained again that is cost effective because we see that we we have we if we even our own customers are use lot of different tools to uh, create snapshots right and uh, uh, create backups but but there is no way to okay yeah this guy right so using this start ec2 instances and stop ec2 instances uh, 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 so this guy will fetch you all the uh, tags and you can say that okay these guys who are who has this tag just shut shut this down on this uh, uh, so shut this down on this uh, uh, schedule you can create a schedule here and then on create, create a uh, tag uh, create a job and similarly uh, i'll quickly show this so this 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 small feature number of snapshots to retain helps you so for example helps you to save cost so for example if you use bot metric to create this kind of uh, backup jobs it it lets you uh, say that okay when, on whenever you are creating the 11th snapshot remove my first snapshot in that way you are not uh, just uh, accumulating too many snapshots and uh, uh, in in a way adding it to your uh, uh, cost <clears throat> all right <laughs> and then uh, bot metric gives you uh, 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 an advanced cost explorer wherein you can uh, drill down uh, at very granular level you can mix and match uh, a lot of different parameters you can filter it uh, 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 to a great extent uh, let's see where we, okay yeah so so you and and, and you can also uh, 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 see your hourly data as well daily data as well and then you can filter it uh, uh, by all all the uh, uh, parameters which which are possible in uh, uh, aws right now <laughs> you can also filter using your tags and then and then ultimately you would want to export it as csv and uh, consume uh, it offline <laughs> right and 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 we have an a very very extensive uh, 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 cost reporting uh, <clears throat> as you can see uh, we have cost summary reports spend reports by tags spend reports by accounts ec2 spend report uh, uh, reserve instance uh, recommendation reports ec2 ri utilization reports that okay how how much your your utilization is actually in comparison to your reservations cost comparison reports which are like this week versus last week this month versus last month so that you can make uh, uh, an informed decision that how how well you need to uh, take on from there or or if you do you need to any uh, take any action or not and on top of that uh, bot metric uh, also sends you a daily cost summary you can of course uh, decide whom who who all in your team needs to receive this kind of email uh, but 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 it 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 helps you to be in check that okay am i spending too much or was there a a, a huge uh, uh, cost yesterday so you do not wait till till the day you receive your bill and and, and get sorted so you can uh, take action uh, uh, right away it also uh, uh, sends you uh, a quick summary of optimization opportunities which bot metric uh, has uh, figured out uh, for you and uh, uh, delivered to your inbox so so yeah and also uh, there itself you can download a report which which has uh, details in in, in greater uh, 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 formats and then uh, <coughs> Uh, there there's something uh, uh, which is amiss in aws uh, right now as well it's the cost estimation it's very rudimentary right now uh, there as well but we have improved our cost estimation to uh, to uh, take in a lot of uh, 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 factors such as your reservations your usage patterns your, we, we look at your history that okay where your spikes come in uh, in which uh, days or which uh, 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 parts of the year we will we, we consider all those things and and uh, the, we we have improved our estimations in last uh, one year or so and, and 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 on top of that we have budget alerts uh, and the best budget alert is uh, uh, this guy uh, uh, estimated uh, uh, budget alert the best budget alert is the uh, monthly estimate budget alert because uh, uh, that that lets you uh, that tells you beforehand that hey you you might be spending Uh, 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 more than your uh, estimate, right? Daily spend and weekly spend are like after you have spent uh, 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 that particular amount, it will alert you. Uh, uh, 
Yeah, so so that that's about uh, uh, budget alerts, <clears throat> and then we we know that uh, uh, reservations are one of the main uh, factors in uh, 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 bringing down cost on AWS. So we have a dedicated section for uh, uh, reserve instance planner. So we right now have EC2 reserve instance planner as well as RDS reserve instance planner. What it lets you do is it, it helps you in, in your uh, uh, planning and it, it helps you in, in uh, uh, deciding the, that what all uh, uh, you need to reserve, which all instances you need to reserve, in which region, what type, all things. So you can uh, uh, also uh, uh, <clears throat> change filters and add, add uh, uh, in, uh, 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 informations uh, as, as per your need and then take a call uh, that okay do, do you have uh, the budget required for three year uh, uh, all upfront or not if you if you don't have that then you can go for one year parcel upfront so all, all, all these things uh, uh, can be uh, uh, achieved uh, from here and and and, and there is a, a, a detailed report as well which you can download and uh, uh, consume offline <clears throat> And then on top of that, there's something we, we, we call it as unused uh, uh, RI analyzer. So, so what this guy does is that it checks that, okay, uh, uh, do you, are you using your reservations or not? If not, is there any possibility wherein you can modify that reservations and start uh, uh, getting benefit from it, right? So by modifying instances, you, you double up your uh, uh, benefits, right? So because you're already losing money on your reservations, Plus, you are paying on-demand cost for a, for your reservation, right? So in that, so that way you you uh, 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 save save double by modifying your uh, uh, reserved uh, instances, right? <laughs> so that's about unused reserve instances. So uh, in, in in summary, uh, uh, <clears throat> Botmetric helps you to to be on top of what's happening in your uh, uh, AWS. Uh, infrastructure with respect to cost it lets you uh, 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 track your spend and uh, and if you in and if you have tagging discipline in your team then 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 it, it makes really easy for you to uh, uh, detect uh, people who are violating or, or people who are uh, uh, spending a lot and make them accountable uh, and also uh, 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 RDS planning and EC2 planning uh, RI planning is not one-time job uh, as you know, most of uh, uh, infrastructures keep growing, keep shrinking. Uh, so, so uh, uh, continuously you need to uh, monitor and revisit your RI planning almost every week or at least almost every month <clears throat> to keep a check. Then, okay, that are you wasting uh, any any reservations uh, uh, or not, or do you have uh, any instances or, or which you need, which you want to use it for long term but not yet reserved. So all, all, all these things, uh, uh, it will help. Plus, uh, uh, using our extensive uh, advanced cost explorer, you can drill down and then also uh, create custom reports in the form of CSVs. Uh, 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 lot of customers have, have, have uh, um, covered lot of their own use cases just by using our advanced cost explorer. Uh, budget alerts and uh, and something which is which one of our customers recently was super happy about was he received when he received an email saying that hey your RIs are going to expire in next 45 days he was really thrilled he sent us a <laughs> thank you note but but yeah uh, 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 RI expiry alerts is 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 something uh, uh, which also uh, bot metric uh, uh, sends you when it sees that okay you have a RI which which is expiring because right right now there is no way in AWS for you to auto renew your uh, reservations. Plus, uh, there is a chance that you would not want to auto renew. So all all, all these things uh, 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 and those decisions then you can take with the help of uh, RI planner. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Botmetric provides uh, accurate estimates. Of course, since it is an estimate, it it, it will keep on improving. Uh, but but uh, uh, my, uh, my feel is we have we have uh, uh, gone gone uh, uh, to a, to a, a big extent there, <clears throat> and plus automate instance start stop uh, and and with this we also have a lot of other jobs which can be uh, uh, used uh, even from uh, day one because uh, taking backups and uh, and being uh, uh, highly available is one of uh, uh, the things which everybody wants. Right. 
So, uh, so by this, I'll uh, uh, give the handle back to Raj. Raj. Thank you. So, um, Amar, um, thank you for walking everybody through Botmetric and how it's one of the mediums in which you can uh, have an oversight on your cost. Why don't we see, um, as promised, uh, right, we are we are reserving almost 15-20 minutes for questions and any kind of inputs. Why don't we see if people have any have questions? Um, we can scroll, scroll up. What is the okay? There's a question from Sam Khan. What is the costing model of Botmetric itself? Is it subscription based or it's a pay per a pay per usage? Uh, so Botmetric itself is actually a subscription based, just like software as a service um, product that you get in the market. However, right, we have the flexibility for you to pick up a pricing plan depending on how much you are spending on AWS. So uh, I hope that helps. Uh, what are the questions are there? Okay. Okay. All right. So why don't we go to the to the audio bridge to see if there are any questions? Yeah, Raj. Uh, this is Saurabh. Can you hear me? Yes, Saurabh. We can hear you. Saurabh, uh, if you don't mind, could you just uh, repeat the question again? Um, we, we, we heard um, some parts of the question. Um, so, um, sure. yes. No so, I would like to ask is, uh, so, Botmetric will be helpful in monitoring only AWS resources in the enterprises or is it is, uh, helpful in uh, monitoring other cloud vendor resources as well? So, I am a cloud <coughs> industry like process or Wipro. And I do have presence from my cloud vendor. Got it. Got it. No, a, a great question, and we keep getting asked in that. So, um, um, so essentially, at this moment, uh, we are heavily focused on AWS only. Um, however, that could change as part of the roadmap. And the reason for that is we decided to to be very deep in, in one area. Azure support we will uh, roll out very soon. Yeah, we are working on the support, but to answer your question, Saurabh, for now, we are we are only AWS and we plan to be looking at, um, um, at Azure very shortly. Okay. Uh, another one I have for as a follow-up. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, you can certainly uh, reach out to us, but uh, uh, there will be a separate charge for uh, uh, custom reports, but they will be very, very nominal. So you need not uh, worry about uh, them. So if there are, uh, uh, so you can send in specific uh, uh, custom report requests, uh, and, and 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 surely we we, we have a lot of customers who who, who are uh, for for whom we are creating custom reports already. Okay, thank you, Saurabh. Um, do we have any other questions from anybody else? So, leaving conference. Yes. So, um, so actually, um, question for Amar Khan. I actually had a question for Amar. Leaving um, conference. Um, leaving so, conference. So, Amar, the question I have is, um, besides AWS itself, right, uh, what is one of the misconception people may have about cost management on AWS? Meaning, a lot of the cost, is it is it purely AWS itself or there is a operational hover in terms of people? And other yeah, parts? exactly. So, uh, so it's not only the resource cost which comes into picture. You, you, you need to have your uh, uh, people there. You need to have... Uh, uh, your a DevOps team, you you need to have separate engineers, cloud engineers, right? So uh, so having Botmetric uh, in the mix uh, will will help you reduce your number of uh, 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 people. Also, you need in order to uh, 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 figure out or 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 run your day to day AWS infrastructure. A lot of thing uh, uh, in 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 AW, in uh, Botmetric which did not which we did not talk about today. 
uh, includes uh, uh, infrastructure audit, which tells you that, hey, uh, what are your security loopholes? What are your uh, performance bottlenecks? What are your uh, 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 DR and backup issues that are you ha uh, uh, proper, have you properly backed up or not? So if, if a person needs to, or if a human needs to uh, do all these things, it's going to take a lot of time. Uh, uh, and effort and and in, and, and in effect uh, uh, that that's a huge cost right so uh, uh, and and on and on top of that uh, botmetric also helps you in uh, uh, fixing those issues uh, uh, within a fraction of a minute right if you uh, so it, it saves almost uh, uh, four to five uh, clicks per uh, fix uh, uh, which which you would uh, ultimately need to go to do in in, in your uh, uh, AWS account plus the know-how the know-how so so that consider the time uh, an engineer needs to uh, uh, spend in, in in getting to know how to fix that issue so you you save uh, that as well plus the number of clicks uh, uh, you are saving on uh, so 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 also uh, botmetric provides a lot of automation jobs which which you can uh, 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 use and 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 they and they'll be very reliable. You you might think that okay, I can write a script and run on a uh, server as a cron, but but what if that server goes down, right? Your if you have a missing critical data, your it will not be backed up, right? And 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 there are best practices like backing up your backups. <laughs> so we, as I said, with the freedom of uh, cloud, lot of uh, responsibility comes in. So you need to uh, 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 back up your backups into a different accounts. And also, you should copy your backups across regions to be to remain highly available if Got you it. have any missing critical data. So, so your view is uh, cost management and efficiency on AWS is a combination of not only using the AWS resources as they're meant to be used, but also having an understanding of the capabilities within AWS and the human aspect of it, which which is uh, uh, which may, which which can be met using some level of automation at some part. Yes, yes, Got definitely. It. Um, the uh, uh, follow-up question on to to the question, right? So, uh, what is the level that one needs to be to go and achieve the kind of design we talked about, or it's a series of progression that a team or a group of people or one person needs to achieve on top of AWS? See, it has to be a series of operations. It cannot be done at once. As I said, as I mentioned, even in, in uh, when I was talking, that uh, you take example of uh, reservations, right? Many people feel that it's one-time job, but it's not. Right, you, you you need to go and review your reservations uh, almost on a daily basis. It's quite possible someone has launched a new instance, uh, a, and 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 he and he's sure that that instance is going to uh, run for another at least a year, right? And that might that instance might be launched uh, somewhere in uh, between, right? So to answer your question, no, it's not a one-time thing. It has to be a continuous continuous uh, uh, task, and, and 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 an entire team needs to be in on it together. Okay, great. Thank you, Amor. Um, folks, um, anybody else have any questions before we try and wrap it up? Yeah, uh, it's Lee here. I just have one question. Like, uh, uh, does Botnetics uh, help us in understanding the security issues or the instance is getting compromised? Do, do we have something related to that area? Yes, yes. we do. So, we uh, do. Uh, why don't we have Amar quickly, if you're still on the view, um, to answer a question, the answer is yes. Um, Amar, why don't you give some more insights? Yeah, sure. So, uh, as part of your, uh, as part of our comprehensive uh, uh, infrastructure audit, we have a very extensive set of uh, audit items for uh, security. Which, which, so if you know that we, we we are a managed services provider, right? So for our internal teams, we 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 mandate all of these values to be zero, right? So uh, right side values should be zero. If you can see a lot of uh, checks regarding uh, uh, around IAM, around security group that, okay, you can, see, you can see that this guy is open to public. So things like that is termination protection enabled, cloud trail enabled. So the basic checks which, which people needs to have uh, in place on day to day basis. Uh, do you have too many security groups? Is your root account uh, having access key? Do you, is your root account not having MFA enabled? Do you have any unused IAM access keys? Think, things like that. Uh, uh, um, do you have encryption in your RDS or not? What about your bucket permissions? Do you have any buckets which are completely open to public? So, so a bunch of uh, uh, checks are done and, and, and wherever possible, 
there is also a, a click to fix button as well I think it, it will be there in a new security groups, right? You can just remove this uh, security group right from here because most of the security groups lying around, it's, it's, it can be a security hazard, right? So yeah, to so answer your question, yeah. yes, yeah. Um, folks, any other questions? question I got your question so uh, uh, let me answer this so uh, so that will happen by using cloud trail logs uh, and to answer your question no that's not there uh, right now in bot metric but but it's already in work uh, we, we, we already have a alpha version uh, of this but but you would need to wait uh, uh, one 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 and a half uh, month uh, uh, exactly that use case is there uh, in which uh, for example somebody is accessing from a region where where you do not access regularly so yes uh, uh, an alert will be sent uh, in in that case and uh, 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 yes so so th th this has been asked by so many customers that uh, it, it, it's now in, in in line yeah so let me just add something yeah go ahead go ahead please Let me let me offer this and talk about Amar said right. So the case use case we talked about is and often and happens is very reactive. Bot metric can actually help you on the security part, uh, also on a proactive basis. If you're constantly willing to do an audit, say on a weekly basis, you'll be surprised at the the level of detail or some insights that you get. Uh, Amar, you want to add something? Yes. So so there is an audit which says uh, 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 unused uh, uh, access keys, right? So, so the, the, the chances are someone compromised your access keys and started launching instances or you did not have your users uh, properly MFA enabled. So if you do all those things on regular basis, day to day basis, right? There is someone taskmaster in the team which looks at the audit on daily basis and say, okay, hey, this is the red flag, uh, fix it, this ASAP, right? These kind of problems can be easily uh, 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 stopped, prevented from uh, uh, happening. Right, and and plus okay. plus your uh, cost reports will 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 let you know the the uh, uh, next day itself. Uh, so even though we do not have cloud trail right away, uh, which we will have uh, 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 very soon, uh, these kind of uh, uh, mishaps can also be uh, detected uh, at at very early stage, as early as within twenty four hours. But yeah, you would have already okay. lost uh, some money there. Okay. Great. Um, okay. Yep. Great. Um, folks, folks, any other questions? Yeah, hello. Yes, please. Is it Sudhil? Is it Sudhil? Uh, yes, Sudhil, go ahead. Hello? Yes, go yeah. ahead. I'm first time attending this. So, uh, it's a different to part metric. Uh, uh, actually, I'm first time attending this and uh, I'm trying to learn AWS. Hello. Yes, yes, go ahead. Um, yeah. what, is, what is your question? It's go ahead. Uh, Question is, uh, I don't know this, so can you clarify on that before? So, that's uh, why I came here, I came to attend this. Okay. Uh, that's why I have not understand anything what's going on. Okay, so, so a little bit, uh, yeah. not in bit, please, just please. Yeah, no, no worries. So, basically, this, 
this webinar was focused on on those uh, people who are interested in knowing about the essentials of AWS cost management. Cost management is a very deep topic in AWS and we wanted to take the opportunity to talk about cost management and when we did that by talking about the principles of cost management and also how you could use a product like Botmetric to go and manage and track as well as uh, get reports and insights on your cost management. That was the theme of the call today. Yeah, I got, I got all. Uh, okay, so here you mentioned uh, some Sandeep asking some security issues or something. So yes. Yeah. Go. Yeah, go on. Yeah, in, when I can use CloudWatch, it is mentioned any every time. Uh, suppose I uh, suppose my instance uh, a date word will be expired at the time. So it will be helpful for me, or uh, it will be continuously go on. Uh, so whatever I want, I use it. So, is your question uh, uh, related to CloudWatch alarms? Yeah, obviously. Yeah, no. So, so uh, that's uh, uh, so. Botmetric does not uh, 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 help you in, uh, in 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 fixing your CloudWatch alarms, but but it can help you in not getting those alarms, right? So, it can pro it, it it can help you in pro proactively figuring out or uh, uh, making ensuring your uh, infrastructure is not going to those alarms, right? So yeah, that's a that's a, a completely different uh, uh, path which is there in AWS. It's it's for monitoring purposes and letting you know, for example, if the CPU utilization is very high at any given point of time, and you, and you have created an alarm for that, you will receive that, and then you can uh, take action on that uh, uh, on AWS uh, infrastructure. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, uh, to answer your question, uh, uh, no, Botmetric uh, uh, does fetch data from CloudWatch. But uh, uh, it's it, it's not uh, uh, it, it does not help you in uh, uh, tackling your CloudWatch alarms as yeah, of okay. now. In, yeah. uh, in your dashboard, cost analytics in that link. So yeah. Some another link, cost optimizer is there. Yes. Left side. Yes. Uh, left side. So in that cost optimizer, uh, suppose uh, when I see from somewhere, suppose when I use instances and reservoir instances, at that time the cost will be very less compared to. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, how will you uh, organize that? And when I complete some of my reserved instance. Uh, yeah. So, so for that we have a extensive uh, dedicated section for uh, a reserve instance planner, as you can see in your screen right now. Uh, we we discuss this in detail uh, during our call. Uh, uh, you can. Uh, uh, yeah, you can uh, you can you can uh, 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 sign up and 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 have a feel of this. Or uh, a call. Yeah, or, or you can even write to us or give us a call uh, uh, offline after the uh, webinar. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right, folks. So um, since time is up, uh, and uh, I just want to, my, me and Amar are very really thankful to all of you. We'll hopefully we can do this on a, on a regular basis. If you have any feedback, any other suggestions, webinars, please send it our way. But thank you and uh, have a wonderful day. Yeah, you can uh, uh, send your uh, feedbacks or emails or questions or anything you have to uh, amar at the rate uh, botmetric.com. Uh, A-M-A-R at the rate botmetric.com. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a wonderful session. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you.